really feel you're in space. Two more Gemini missions would fly, each building on the success of the other. The United States was finally ahead in the space race. After Alexei Lanoff's spacewalk, not another Soviet manned mission would fly for the duration of Project Gemini. America, in the meantime, had amassed nearly 2,000 man-hours in space, compared to just over 500 for the Soviet Union. What had happened? How had the Soviet Union, once so far ahead, fallen so far behind? Jim Oberg believes that Nikita Khrushchev's emphasis on firsts was the unraveling of the Soviet space program in the 60s. The man in space flights, one man for an hour, then another man for a whole day. The next step would have been a man for several days, but that wasn't enough of an of a, of a increase in, in the uh, sensational nature of the flight. So under Khrushchev demanded that two men be sent up in separate ships. After that, several men in space, two men, how about a woman in space? So that again was something else, totally political in nature. Khrushchev made up the whole idea, told Carl if he wanted any money for the space program, better find a woman and find a way to put her in space. After that, the next step was put up three men in a space capsule to beat the American Gemini program. And that involves some particularly trying, uh, particularly difficult engineering sacrifices to squeeze three men into what had previously been a one-man spaceship. It was Khrushchev who demanded the space spectaculars and the stunts. It was Karlov who had to deliver. And ultimately, after several years of that, he went, he, his reach exceeded his grasp, and he began to experience both technical failures and his own health was ruined. Khrushchev himself was overthrown for that and other reasons. And at the end, it was all ashes. Another view 